Alrighty, good morning. So today I wanna to kinda of discuss something that uh, recently had happen with one of my clients. So you may be wondering why I'm so against having filters prior to your pressure tank on your well system. And this is a prime example of why, right? So with a well, right, you're gonna have the supply line that comes from the well and the pump is gonna be in the well that pushes the water up and into the house. In the home, you're gonna have the well tank, which is the big blue pressure tank in the basement. On a submersible well pump, you will have a pressure switch, which is gonna be a little gray box inside the house on the T-assembly, which is just below the uh, pressure tank. Now, this pressure switch is what's actually gonna turn the water to the, uh, turn the pump on to get water into the house. It's a, usually gonna be an analog device with a spring, and what that spring is gonna do is it's gonna read the pressure in the pipe, and it's gonna tell the pump when to kick on and when to kick off. So, why am I against having a filter before that? In this particular circumstance, my client uh, had us take a look at the well back in September. Everything was working pretty good. The well yield ran for six hours. They were getting about 3.3 gallons per minute. So we knew that this well had plenty of water. We knew that it ran for about an hour and a half before we got to the plateau of 3.3. So mechanically speaking and well speaking, there's, there's no issues with that well. This particular property has what's referred to as a low pressure cutoff on the pressure switch. That's the little silver toggle device that you'll usually see on pressure switches. And it's designed to where if the pressure in the pipe drops generally to 25 PSI or less, it will disconnect the power to the well pump so that way the pump doesn't burn up. You'll usually see this on wells in our area that are lower yielding. Uh, anywhere between 4.0 and less is usually where you'll see it. The reason why is while you're running the pump, you run the risk uh, if you just turn on an exterior hose bib, let's just say you're filling a pool, if you turn on that exterior hose bib and you just let it ride for eight hours, you very well could draw down all of the reserve in the well and the pump may be pumping faster than what the well can produce and then at that point you burn up the well pump. So these low pressure cutoffs are designed to help prevent inadvertent destruction of your well pump but it's an analog device, so it's not smart. So it doesn't know why the pressure dropped. It just knows that it does. There are electronic ones that you can get installed that uh, will have an automatic timer to reprime re itself and get itself set back up. These types of systems, generally, if you lose power in the house, you have to physically go downstairs, toggle it up to get the pressure built back up in the pressure tank so that we have water in the house. So this particular customer, we know, again, we have a good well. He calls me yesterday and he tells me that, hey, we're running out of water fairly consistently. So he shows me what he's got going on and he shows me uh, a photo of the switch. So I tell him how to reprime the switch, we're back in business. He runs the water for about 15 minutes after that, shuts off again. So I go back over to his house to try and figure out, well, what's going on? Is it the well, is it mechanical? What's causing this to happen? So there was a filter, a little spin down filter that was installed on the supply line into the house by the previous owner. I will see these happen a lot because people are very concerned about having sediment enter into their pressure tank. Sediment in a pressure tank is not the end of the world. It's not like a water heater where the more sediment you get, the more damage you will cause to the system. So like with a water heater, you wanna make sure that you, pump, you rinse it out every now and again, usually once a year, get rid of all that scale, get rid of all that sedimentation, so that way the elements work better, it works more efficiently, and you get a longer lifespan out of the water heater. A pressure tank is just gonna be a large steel container with a bladder, and what'll happen is the water will push up on that bladder, which compresses the air up top, and then that compressed air will pneumatically push the rest of the water throughout the house. So there's no heating element, there's no coil, there's no electrical components beyond the pump pushing the water into the home. If sediment in the pressure tank bothers you, you could always just drain your pressure tank every year and that would also get rid of, of the sediment. I go to several houses a day, multiple times a week, and I, I rarely see sediment in the pressure tanks once I drain down the tank. So, going back to this, this particular client's house, we see that there's a filter prior to the switch. 
turn it on. I hook a hose up to the pressure tank, run the water for a little bit. Immediately, it cuts right on out. So I look at the filter and you can see that it's very much clogged. So by unclogging that filter, cleaning it off, draining it down, putting it right back where it was, everything worked great, right? So what was happening was there was enough sediment that was coming from the well that it actually plugged up the filter that was before the pressure switch. And that pressure switch, again, has that low pressure cutoff, so it's very sensitive uh, to the pressure in the pipe. So the filter was clogged up enough to where when they were pulling water with a shower, gardening, etc., they were pulling more water than, the, than can get through that sediment filter, which caused a pressure drop and caused the pressure switch to disconnect the power. So we get this fixed up, tell the homeowner that, hey, you gotta make sure you clean this out every month, or if it really gets on your nerves to go ahead and just disconnect that filter entirely, because he has sediment filters post pressure tank or pressure switch. So I wanted to bring this to y'all's attention to make sure that you guys realize, like I'm not harping on everybody installing filters prior to the pressure tank to be me. It is a practical application. You run the risk of the pipes bursting or having issues like this where you could be in the middle of the shower, that filter clogs up, and then now you have no water. Fortunately, this homeowner had a pressure, uh, a low pressure cutoff on his pressure switch, which would stop the pump from pumping and overexerting onto that filter, risking either burst pipes or fittings blowing. I've had videos that I've posted of other properties that did not have that low pressure cutoff, and then you got to see exactly what happens when that filter clogs up. So, if you want filtration, you need to make sure that it goes post pressure switch can't have any kind of filters, you can't have any kind of restricting devices before the switch. If you want to have a uh, filter prior to the pressure tank, for whatever reason, you need to relocate the position of the switch. There are plenty of check valves that have stems that you can attach the pressure switch to, as long as you have enough electrical cable, to where you can have the supply line in, you put your insert fitting, and then you put on your check valve, and then you attach the pressure switch directly to that check valve, uh, and then you can put your filters, pressure tank, etc. And the reason you do it that way is because the switch is what calls for the water. You will have no restricting devices in the way that could potentially cause it to plug up. On a jet pump, this is a little bit different. Jet pumps are a beast in all of, of its own. This is mostly specifically just to submersible well pumps. I hope that this kind of helped give you guys a little bit more clarification. I know I get a lot of comments about people wanting to have filters prior to their tanks. My opinion is it's a bad idea, uh, but you know, it's your house. You can do whatever you want with it. I just would advise you not to, not to do that. If you like content like this, I have videos posted daily on the world of well and septic. If you have any questions or any, any areas of conversation you'd like me to cover, feel free to go ahead and leave a comment below. I try to get to all of the commenters as fast as I can. And, you know, hopefully we can all have a good conversation and learn something together. Until next time.